Well, as my chat earlier with Mark Latham indicated, there's so much identity politics and virtue signalling doing the rounds this week, it is not funny. And the Institute of Public Affairs has uncovered more of this in our universities. An audit of humanities at top-ranked universities has found that courses are being overrun by identity politics. Meanwhile, in the UK, one university is decolonising its curriculum and in the process is dropping lessons featuring literary giants like Geoffrey Chaucer. To discuss that and this study on Australian humanities, I'm joined now by the Director of the Foundations of Western Civilisation Program at the IPA, Bella Debrera. Bella, thank you very much for your time. Good evening. Thank you very much for having T me. Tell us about your study and what you were able to find. So this study is an audit of, um, as you mentioned, uh, the humanities as they're taught in Australia's top 10 universities. So I audited 1,181 subjects. And what I found was that the cultural and intellectual uh, uh, heritage of Western civilization has been completely removed from the humanities as they are today. And they've been replaced with these uh, divisive theories of um, identity politics and uh, cultural, cultural um, sorry, critical race theory. So um, out of the 1,181 subjects, 572 teach identity politics and 380 teach critical race theory. Um, so the problem here with the humanities is that Academics have turned the humanities into a political project and they've replaced the uh, foundations and values of Western civilization with a, a really terrible, fatal combination of nihilism and anarchy. And that's what we're seeing today in the humanities. It probably didn't come up in your findings, but what's your gut feeling about who's responsible for this? Is the instigator the university? Is the instigator the teaching fraternity like tutors and lecturers? Or is it just part of a new curriculum, or is it all of the above? It's, um, it began in the 1960s. It's all based on postmodernist theory of some French postmodernists, and it's been um, incubating in the university since, since the 1960s, so it's very much here to stay, which is, which is one of the major problems, because university students aren't getting um, any different kind of uh, worldview. All they're getting is critical race theory and identity politics. Um, and this, uh, what we're seeing at the university, university of Leicester, which is basically cancelling all literature before 1500 is actually part of a decolonization program which has been sweeping through universities uh, for a very long time. And um, it's actually coming to Australia. There was a, a, a movement in 2015 at the University of Sydney which asked, you know, why is my curriculum white? Um, and there are actually two courses um, in, in Australia that teach how to decolonize a curriculum. So, you know, what's going on in England is just part of a broader movement. But Western civilization is part of telling an accurate portrayal of history. You are not telling an accurate portrayal of, or giving an accurate portrayal of history to students at a very impressionable age if you're telling only one side and the side that you have discovered overtakes the humanities. Yes, look, it is very one-sided, and this is a problem. It's a very, very narrow worldview, and and in my opinion, it's a very depressing and very limiting worldview. Um, and it's a worldview that's preventing Australians from living together harmoniously. You know, if you're going to drum critical race theory and identity politics into students, they're going to come out um, not understanding how to to function or how to live in a in a cohesive society because they're completely um, uh, brainwashed by these ideologies, which are divisive, and they tell us that we have to be um, identified by our differences rather than our similarities. Yeah. Um, so they're really dangerous, and I don't think we can underestimate just how dangerous they are and the effect that they're having on society. Yeah, divisive is the word that comes up whenever we talk about this subject. I think of Chaucer, and as part of this decolonialisation of um, that university in the UK, th that there was a talk about getting rid of Chaucer, although I understand late today or early today the university is said that that's not happening. I think the pressure might have been a little bit too much for them. But this is the art of storytelling. This is, the, this is telling the history of English literature. Like, give me a break. I know, but you see, the problem is that they're not interested in stories or literature or, or the great canon anymore. That, that was, was, has been cast aside for a long time and just replaced with critical theory. Um, when you look at how critical theory is taught here in, in Australia, 
um, it pretty much dominates English literature. When I looked at the English literature courses, only 25% of them actually refer to the Western canon. So it's very much, very much here to stay. And it's a great shame because, you know, why would students want to go and study English literature if they're not going to get taught these things, if mm. all they're going to hear is critical theory? Yeah which is just sad more than anything else. It's very sad. And I will say one more thing. They're charging uh, students £10,000 a year to study this, which is about $20,000. So um, I don't think they're getting back much for their money. Outrageous.